بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد Continue on in our treaties على قيدة الواسطية by Shaykh Al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah رحمه الله تعالى And before we go into the next chapter which in fact will end his muqaddama or end his his um, his introduction I wanted to briefly review something very important as we mentioned in the last dars what Shaykh Salih bin Fawzan Hafidhullah Ta'ala said regarding the types of ilhad the types of uh, preferring falsehood to that which is correct okay preferring falsehood over the path which is correct and that's in general, a general meaning of ilhad in reference to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. So it's actually preferring a false interpretation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine attributes to the true and preferred meaning, which is the meaning that is known to Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah according to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Salaf al-Saleh radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een and at the Rasihim uh, the, 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 the head of them is the Sahaba to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een so it's imperative that we have this understanding and that we understand the types of ilhad that the Shaykh mentioned. He mentioned five types. The first one is naming idols by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's names. Okay, it is, this is a type of ilhad. This is a type of moving away from the truth to falsehood. Naming idols by the name, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names, which should only refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and as we mentioned before, also we have many groups, unfortunately, and sects in America, in which they uh, take the divine attributes or names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and scribe that to themselves or to other people. And they even refer to themselves as Allah and God's wa'iyadu billah min dhalika. And one of the refutations that we can do because they're not going to understand this concept of ilhad but a very simple refutation for those people who call themselves the gods and earths and the five percent nation and things like this is if you ask you say okay you're a god well can you control your bowel movement and you're a god so what if your wife's going to give birth can you determine the sex is it a male or a female is it healthy etc and of course, if they're truthful, they'll say, no, I can't. And as we see, as many of us, as many as human beings, suffer uh, various types of uh, deaths, and especially when people are in their, in their death sickness, they, if they could, it's very few people who would not choose to relieve the pain that they're going through. For example, a cancer patient, cancer patient, for, and, and many of those individuals if you give them this argument of course there's nothing that they can say to uh, dispute it because they cannot protect themselves from prostate, can prostate cancer they cannot protect themselves from the various illnesses and sicknesses no matter what they say no matter how they lie and the truth will be when their death comes the second type of ilhad that we mentioned is naming Allah by unbefitting names. So, naming, uh, uh, referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth, by names which are not mentioned in the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that are befitting to refer to the Lord of the heavens and earth. For example, we mentioned uh, in the previous uh, lecture that referring to Allah as the Christians do as some of the Christians especially the Catholics and those who believe in the Trinity they refer to God the Father in Islam that's uh, absolutely uh, false and we cannot 
uh, do that and, and engage in that type of uh, that type of. Uh, you know, we cannot refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by those names, by the Father or the Son or etc. Because all of these things are mentioned. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refutes them all throughout the Quran. This, uh, this concept of the Trinity and the concept of God being either the Father of us or being the Son of someone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُلَدْ that he has not, he did not beget, nor was he begotten. So Allah did not give birth, nor was he given birth to. And the third uh, type of uh, ilhad that we mention, this is naming Allah by something that does uh, that denotes shortcomings. Okay, by referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by something which is uh, not just befitting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which also refers to some uh, shortcomings and imperfection. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. In Allah tayyib, wala yaqbal ila tayyib. Allah is, is, uh, is tayyib, and He doesn't accept anything but goodness and righteousness, and that which is tayyib. So Allah, the Almighty of the heavens and earth, al Hayyu al qayyum He does not have any shortcomings or any imperfection. He is free from imperfection. And by referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by a name that denotes, that even has the possibility of being imperfect as an attribute, then this is, lets you know automatically that it's false. And this is one of the uh, principles regarding al asmai wa sifat that the ulama have deduced from looking at the text of the Quran in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. And the fourth, uh, fourth uh, type of ilhad is negating or Refusing the correct meanings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, divine names or attributes. So actually negating the meaning, as, the, as we mentioned, the Jahamiyyah and, and, and some of the other sects, that they outright negated, especially the extreme ones from amongst them. They negated the meaning in totality, saying Allah, yes, we refer to Allah as Ar-Rahman, but we don't know what Rahma means. You know, Rahma has no meaning. Or he does not possess Rahma. Wa'iyadu billah min dhalika. Rahma meaning mercy. So, uh, these people completely negate the correct uh, meaning. And this is a type of ilhad, a severe type of ilhad. And then the fifth type is, of course, making resemblance between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, and His creation uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all throughout the Qur'an has let us know that He has no partners and that He, nothing resembles Him, nothing is like Him as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates this in totality when He subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٌ وَهُوَ سَمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an that there is nothing comparable to him and he is the all hearing the all seeing so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negates there's nephi in there he, ne he negates that there's any comparison between him and his creation and he makes ifbat he affirms for himself that he is the all hearing the all seeing that he possesses divine characteristics and attributes which are perfect and are characteristics which he subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses in perfection alone nothing else possesses those divine attributes so meaning that yes as 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 human beings and as we see from the animals that there's a mercy that we possess mercy but our mercy is not like Allah's mercy and our mercy is imperfect and limited. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most beneficent, the most 
merciful, and there is no resemblance between him and his creation. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that lets us know that, yes, as human beings and as animals, we possess certain attributes because something that cannot be described is considered nothing. If you can't describe something at all, you have nothing to describe it by, then it actually doesn't exist. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine attributes in which He subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the Quran about Himself subhanahu and his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam described him Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran by those divine attributes that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala possesses. So Allah has attributes. We're not like the Jahmiya and those other groups who negate Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's uh, divine names and attributes or the meanings. And that is a type of ilhad, nor are we like the Asha'ira who say, well, we're scared that this might resemble, this might resemble, we believe that if you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though Allah says about himself, he has hands. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he has a wudj, a face, we're afraid to affirm that. So we change the meaning to mean power, or to mean na'ma, or to mean something else, to mean blessings, or something like this. Beca and so then, when they flee from making a resemblance, then they actually fall into what? A type of ilhad. They fall into a type of falsehood, because they use their intellect to determine and to make a judgment about the characteristics, the divine characteristics that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses. قال الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحمه الله تعالى فإنه أعلم بنفسه بغير وبغيره وأصدق القيل وأحسن حديثا من خلقه ثم رسله صادقون مصدقون بخلاف الذين يقولون عليه ما لا يعلمون ولهذا قال سبحانه سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين فسبح نفسه عما وصفه به المخالفون للرسل وسلم على مرسلين وللسلامة ما قالوه من النقص والعيب وهو سبحانه قد جمع فيما وصف وسمي به نفسه بين النفي والإثبات as we mentioned before Shaykh al-Islam said for he meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he knows best his own self and the selves of others. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows himself better than any of his creation and he knows us as his creation better than we know ourselves. What he says is the uh, is the truth, is the 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 best of speech and the and the mo and, and the, the truth, khalas, without there's nothing after the truth. It is the truth. And the best and his messengers are truthful. They have uh, test. They have been testified as against those. They have testified against those who say such things about Allah, which they themselves do not know. So the messengers, alayhi salatu wasalam, they came with a message. They were sent with a message from Allah, divine message, to deliver mankind from zulumat al nur, from darkness to the light. And they said the truth about Allah. Propagating Tawheed, prop propagating monotheism. And they bore witness against the creation. So they established the Hujjah. They established the truth. And then it is upon their followers, it is upon mankind to follow the messengers, alayhim after salatu wa salam, and to have knowledge about Allah, uh, which they informed them about. That is why Allah the Almighty says, Glorified be your Lord, the Lord of honor and power. He is free from what they attribute unto him. 
and peace be on the messengers, and all the praise and thanks are to Allah, Lord of the Alameen, of everything uh, that exists. So he stated his self free from the things with which the opponents of the messengers, alayhim after salatu was salam, the messengers of Allah, salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi, qualified for him, and sent peace unto the prophets since their statements were free of defects and drawbacks or shortcomings. He also mentioned negation and affirmation of the attributes with which he qualified himself. And so it's imperative for us to have faith in the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as mentioned in the Quran in the hadith of the Prophet, a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as we've mentioned on countless occasions. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows himself better than any of his creation. And then after the Lord Subhana, then his messengers, what they were given as far as a message to deliver to mankind. They were the most amongst mankind, they were the most knowledgeable about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we're ordered to follow them. Alayhim after salatu wa salam. And for us as a ummah, as a nation, we're ordered to follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam. Because he was the last of the prophets, alayhim after salatu wa salam. And he was brought with the miracle of the Quran, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it's imperative that we understand this and that we take our understanding from the Quran and the Sunnah about who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and we'll continue on in our study in the next lecture and we'll get into a bit more depth about some very important principles uh, re related to al-asma'i wa sifat that Sheikh Salih bin, uh, Sheikh, uh, bin Uthameen Rahimahullah Ta'ala and Alam Rabbani has to, uh, you know, in his explanation of al aqidah to Wasatiyah, which is absol an absolute must for the Talib al ilm that knows Arabic to have that book as it is in a, uh, an incredibly important and filled with immense benefit in this bab, uh, in this, uh, st in the study about al asmai wa sifat and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.